As summer turned to fall, United Launch Alliance is still waiting for its next BE-4 rocket engine after receiving one after eight years of marriage with Blue Origin. Well, Bezos ever made his big fortune at Amazon through competitive pricing and timely delivery of goods to his customers worldwide. But so far, at least, his Blue Origin space company has been a less reliable vendor. ULA really got dragged into the deep mud with Blue Origin. Find out everything about this in today's episode of AlphaTech. United Launch Alliance's chief executive has just officially pushed the debt launch of its new Vulcan rocket to early 2023 at the request of one of its customers, further delaying a benchmark mission crucial to the Boeing Lockhead Joint Ventures launch business. Vulcan, a roughly 200-foot tall rocket in the final stages of development, will be the centerpiece of ULA's launch business. It also will be a workhorse for U.S. Pentagon missions to space starting late next year as the rocket's predecessor nears retirement over its use of Russian-made engines. We're not going to fly before the end of the year, ULA Chief Executive Tori Bruno said in an interview with two reporters. He added that ULA's customer Astrobotic, a robotics firm using Vulcan to launch a lunar lander, asked for the launch date to be moved to the first quarter of 2023 to buy more time to finish the lander's development. Astrobotics' request officially acts as ULA's previous goal to launch Vulcan by year's end, a target already imperiled by development delays with the rocket's engines that are being built by Amazon.com billionaire Jeff Bezos' space company, Blue Origin. The engines are later than our original schedule that had us flying in December, and it would put a lot of pressure on December, Bruno admitted. ULA got one flight engine this month, but it probably will not receive the other one for installation onto the Vulcan rocket in the near future. In fact, the first engine was put onto the test stand in Texas in early August, but almost as soon as work began to hot-fire the powerful engine, an issue was discovered with the engine build. This necessitated a shipment back to Blue Origin's factory in mid-August, as the company's test stands in Texas do not allow for more than minor work. Even if they had, it would have been a push to get the engines both certified and integrated into the rocket ready to launch in December. Personally, I think it will be around March next year before they are ready, and that is if Blue Origin can get the second engine turned around reasonably quickly. Remember that Blue Origin took two years to build these engines, and even after that, one engine failed to test. Moving forward, how is Blue Origin going to deliver engines in a timely manner when they can't even deliver two working engines after two years of trying? Nearly eight years have passed since Blue Origin and ULA first announced their plans to work together on spaceflight in September 2014. Everything that ULA gets back until now is really like a joke. Bezos had invested heavily in the BE-4 engine development, needing it to power his own large rocket, which would become known as New Glenn. Having ULA as a customer would help offset some of those costs. Since then, however, Blue Origin has not been the best of partners. A couple of years after the BE-4 announcement, Blue Origin changed its public stance on bidding for national security launch contracts. Officials said the new Glenn rocket would, in fact, compete with Vulcan for lucrative military launches. For many engineers and executives at ULA, this felt like betrayal because without U.S. Space Force contracts, the company likely would not exist. So why did ULA decide to go with an unproven company like Blue Origin for its engines? Back at the 2014 announcement, Bruno said, Blue Origin has demonstrated its ability to develop high-performance rocket engines, and we are excited to bring together the best minds in engineering, supply chain management, and commercial business practices to create an all-new affordable, reliable American rocket engine. At the time, Bruno and other ULA executives liked the price and performance of the BE-4 engine. With the methane-fueled first stage and a planned ACES second stage as well as six strap-on boosters, the Vulcan's rocket's performance could exceed that of the costly Delta IV heavy booster by as much as 30%. ACES has since been scrapped in favor of the more conventional Centaur upper stage, but Vulcan remains a powerful heavy lift rocket. It is basically ready to go, except for its engines. Vulcan is essential to the future of ULA as it struggles to compete with US-based launch competitor SpaceX. 
Vulcan should be both less expensive to fly than ULA's existing rockets and, crucially, be powered by engines manufactured in the United States. ULA's current workhorse rocket, the Atlas V, uses Russian-made engines. As relations started to deteriorate between the U.S. and Russia last decade, this became untenable for Congress. Blue Origin's delays have therefore frustrated both ULA as well as Space Force officials, who are eager to begin flying on Vulcan. As Bloomberg points out in a report, ULA said the Vulcan program is now focused on completing BE-4 qualification testing and flight engine deliveries. Its other elements are progressing through final qualification testing to support initial launch capability. Before it can gain flight certification, ULA must complete two successful flight tests. Then it will be greenlit to launch sensitive U.S. military and intelligence cargo. The U.S. Space Force also said it expects to complete initial certification of the Vulcan rocket with the BE-4 engine by March 2023. However, final certification for the largest and most stressing national security missions isn't expected until 2025. Elon Musk's SpaceX, meanwhile, was recently awarded final certifications to fly its Falcon Heavy rocket to launch the same types of sensitive classified missions ULA aims to launch with Vulcan. SpaceX will use its Falcon Heavy rocket with reusable boosters, while Vulcan will be able to jettison its BE-4 engines after launch for reuse. Notably, despite being absent after more than three years, SpaceX Falcon Heavy could launch again as soon as October 28th from Kennedy Space Center in Florida on a long-delayed national security mission for the U.S. Space Force, a military spokesman recently confirmed. The Falcon Heavy rocket mission, codenamed USSF-44, is expected to be the next launch from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy. The long gap between Falcon Heavy launches has been caused by payload delays. The USSF-44 mission was originally scheduled to launch in late 2020, but has been delayed nearly two years by issues with the Space Force payload assigned to fly on the rocket. Regardless, SpaceX has continued to win contracts to build its backlog of Falcon Heavy missions, which offer payload lift capacity greater than the Falcon 9, but below that of the company's next-generation Starship and Super Heavy rocket. The Falcon Heavy is powered by 27 Merlin main engines from three Falcon rocket cores connected together, generating 5.1 million pounds of thrust at liftoff and standing 229 feet or 70 meters tall and 40 feet or 12.2 meters wide. In comparison, Falcon Heavy is more powerful and cheaper than Vulcan. Most importantly, it worked well while Vulcan was still on the ground and waiting for its engines. Year after year, ULA Vulcan has really faded. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and see you next time.